All right, welcome to Science Corner. Uh, my name is Justin White with the Imagination Station Science and History Museum. Uh, today, we're going to kind of switch things up from uh, some of the previous videos we've done where we've had explosions um, and some fun chemistry experiments. Uh, but today, we're actually going to be looking at sharks. Um, we're actually going to dissect a shark, um, which is the uh, spiny dogfish, one of the most common sharks you'll find uh, off our coast. Um, especially if you like to fish, uh, you should have, not have a hard time uh, catching these guys. Um, of, the four, of the 400 species of sharks uh, that we, ha we know of worldwide, uh, the spiny dogfish is one of the most common ones, um, especially in uh, temperate waters, uh, which includes uh, our coast all the way up to Canada um, and then down to about Florida. Um, spiny dogfish gets its name uh, for two reasons. First of all, uh, right in front of each dorsal fin, uh, there will be a spine uh, that contains a small amount of venom uh, in there for defense, um, as well as the fact that these guys hunt in packs just like dogs do. Um, they typically uh, will eat a basically whatever they can get uh, their mouths on, uh, anything ranging from crabs to fish to squid, um, octopus sometimes. Um, it's usually kind of a, a big surprise as far as being able to tell what's, what they've eaten, especially when we get to the stomach part. Um, now, there all are, are all sorts of uh, sharks that live off our coast, uh, dogfish being one. Um, some of the other common ones include uh, the bonnet head shark, which is a subspecies of hammerhead shark, uh, the Atlantic sand tiger, and then also one of the top three most dangerous sharks in the world, the uh, bull shark. Um, great white sharks and tiger sharks do live off our coast as well, but they usually typically will be further out to sea, uh, but they occasionally do come into shallow water. Um, but our shark, the shark we're going to be looking at today, we're going to go quickly go over the external anatomy and then we'll go ahead and we'll dive in and dissect the internal anatomy as well and give you a basic overview. Now, the shark, sharks have two sides. You have your uh, dorsal side and you have your ventral side. The ventral is going to be on the bottom, whereas the dorsal will be is basically the top. Um, starting out at the head, uh, you have a very thick snout, uh, which is made up of cartilage. Uh, sharks do not have bones. They actually, their skeletal system is made up out of cartilage, which it makes them to be lighter, as well as they can actually be more flexible. Um, if you were to grab a shark by the tail, it would be very easy for that shark just to flip around and go ahead and give you a nice bite, so obviously never grab a shark by the tail. Um, these dogfish especially have very large eyes, which are excellent uh, for being able to hunt at night, um, to pull in as much light as they possibly can. Uh, they are very common to catch, especially in the early morning and late afternoon, um, especially at dawn and dusk. Um, Right behind the eyes is where you have what's called the spiracles. The spiracles are basically an opening that allows uh, water to come into uh, the shark's body and then is filtered out through the gills uh, so the shark can get oxygen into its bloodstream. Uh, right behind here we have the two pectoral fins. Pectoral fins allow the shark to kind of have balance um, within the water and help with direction. Um, next up we have our two uh, dorsal fins. Uh, the first dorsal fin is usually kind of the iconic uh, fin that most people associate with sharks, especially after the movie Jaws came out where you see the, sh the fin just coming up out of the water. Um, usually strikes fear and everybody on the beach and everybody rushes out. Um, but this type, uh, the dog shark, you have nothing to worry about. They have a small mouth um, and very tiny, tiny teeth, so you don't really have to worry about them biting you. Um, in, t in fact, most of the times whenever sharks do bite people, it's usually a case of mistaken identity or they don't know what you are and they just want to find out. And once they taste you, they realize you're not what they want and they will leave. Um, and then down at the very end, we have what's called the caudal fin or the tail fin. Uh, this helps with direction and speed. Now, on the underside of the shark, um, we, we can, the gills are more evident. One of the key characteristics of sharks is going to be that you have uh, anywhere between five to seven gill slits, whereas your normal fish will only have about one or two. Um, and then down here, uh, Beneath the pelvic fins, uh, you have what is called the, the cloaca. This one is, we know is a female because it has, a, because all you see is the cloaca. The cloacas were reproduction um, as well as uh, bowel movements will take place out of this opening here. Um, if you have a male, you'll have what are called claspers, uh, where the, you'll see two of those reproductive organs on the outside. Uh, females, you're not going to see anything. So. Next thing we're going to do after we've gone through the external anatomy is we're going to go ahead and we're going to dissect the shark. 
So in doing a dissection, uh, especially a shark where they have very thick skin, the most important tool you're going to need are, will be a scalpel. Of course, whenever you're doing this, you want to make sure you're very careful. Uh, the, the easiest place to, go, to cut is going to be along the last gill slit, and you're going to go from one side to the other. Um, right above th that gill slit is going to be a thick layer of cartilage, which is going to be um, a little bit tougher to cut through. You can cut through it, but you might run the risk of uh, cutting or breaking your scalpel. Now you also want to be sure when you're cutting the shark that you want to cut very lightly and make several cuts um, with the scalpel because you don't want to go too deep and then puncture organs and then you have a mess when you get in on the inside. Um, one other thing I'm going to do here uh, and just to make things a little bit easier, so I'm going to cut off this pectoral fin here just so we can uh, make things a little bit easier. Um, the fins of a shark are also very uh, common uh, to a com common uh, commodity over in Asia, especially, uh, where uh, shark fin soup is very popular and it's also a very big industry currently uh, worldwide. We're trying to stop, make people stop uh, cutting, sh catching sharks just for the fins. Um, basically, all they do is they catch the shark, cut the fins off, and throw the shark back in the water um, where it basically uh, drowns because it can't swim and pump water over its gills. So after we cut across, uh, just beneath the gills, then we come across and come down the length of the body and about to, down to the, re to the area where the cloaca is and then we'll go back across. Now because you probably still have some fibers, uh, muscle fibers and tissue uh, touching, we will go ahead and we'll take our scissors and we'll cut the remaining tissue In that way, our shark should be pretty easy to open up once we get this tissue cut through. Uh, sharks are very muscular, so that's why you're going to have kind of a tough time at first uh, being able to cut through the body. Now the dogfish um, over in the United States, most people don't eat dogfish, but uh, over in England and uh, Germany, for example, they, they do uh, make dishes with the dogfish. Um, in England, whenever you order fish and chips, this is actually the fish that you're eating uh, with your uh, french fries over there. So the next time you go to England, just know whenever you order fish and chips, you're actually ordering sharks and uh, chips. So we will go ahead and we will cut into here. And I will go ahead and I'll remove this tissue as well so we can get in here easier. And whenever you actually cook up a shark, this is what you're eating right here. This is the meat of the shark. Now on the inside of the shark, um, you'll see there are quite a few, bit of fluid. It's going to be a mix of uh, bodily fluid as well as uh, formalin, which is the chemical we use to preserve the shark. Um, the inside of the shark, the largest body organ is going to be the uh, the liver. Uh, sharks do not have a swim bladder, excuse me, like a uh, swim bladder like fish do. Uh, fish have a swim bladder which allows them to stay, uh, pro receive the proper level, uh, level of buoyancy, whereas sharks, uh, they don't have that. Uh, so they have to use their liver in order to help them stay buoyant. Uh, the liver is in three lobes. Uh, you have the two outer lobes and then the inner lobe you're going to have what is called the gallbladder. Uh, that's going to create bile and help with digestion. Uh, now just underneath that is where you'll see the digestive tract uh, whereas you see the esophagus is going to be attached to the mouth um, and then that's going to come all the way down to the intestines. Now what, one of the fun things to do with shark dissections is that you can actually cut open the stomach and see what the shark ate. Um, and so it actually feels like our specimen has eaten, um, eaten something before it died. So we're going to easily cut open the stomach and looks like we have the remains of a fish. Now once the shark has eaten uh, its prey, the prey then goes down into the, uh, di the rest of the digestive tract which includes the spleen and the pancreas uh, where, that, uh, is, where the animal is broken down and then it will be excreted out the cloaca. Now we do have a female, however, 
Uh, we do not have any babies in this one. Sometimes you do get sharks that have uh, babies in them. They actually have two sets um, of uteri or uterus uh, whereas, where the babies will grow um, and then they're given live birth. Uh, the babies will uh, be usually anywhere from about uh, six to eight uh, pups will be born um, from a, from a uh, dogfish. Um, from that point, uh, they will actually go off and try to fend for themselves, but odds are, are they're not really going to uh, have a, a long life. Only about a couple of those will actually survive. Um, these sharks will typically grow up to anywhere between two to or two feet um, to four feet long. Uh, so they're not huge, uh, but uh, usually the females will be larger than the males. Uh, now also, one interesting thing about sharks is usually whenever we associate uh, reproductive organs, we always think they're closer down to the pelvic region, whereas in sharks, the ovaries are actually going to be up towards the head. Um, you can also see up here towards the head, I can pull back the teeth and you can actually see that in the mouth that it does not have the typical triangular shaped teeth that we associate sharks with. Uh, dogfish sharks, what they do is they have what is called uh, clutching teeth, uh, which are basically used for grabbing a pr uh, prey item and then cr basically crushing it to death um, and breaking it up in pieces and then swallowing it. Um, so a lot of times you actually find their, their food whole um, before it's actually digested by the uh, digestive uh, juices that are inside. Um, this, uh, the, uh, the, cut that bottom. so, um, the, what was I trying to say? And you can just pause for a second. Okay. I mean, we're good. We'll just keep going. Okay. And just right when you're ready. You guys all right? Oh, we're, we're, just, we're just yeah, looking. We ain't looking. We're just okay. puking. I'm like, mm. yeah. and you're, you, are you got a good shot? Yeah. yeah. Um, um, so what part do you, Okay, so, so actually, let me, I'm going to go back over the mouth part um, and talk about the teeth yeah, for a second. We're just crushing teeth. So crushing your prey. Is and then, you were just on? yeah. Okay, let's just pick up where you were. So the teeth of the of the uh, dogfish, basically, what they do is they crunch their prey and then they swallow it whole, uh, and which is why you've actually commonly will find. Uh, fish, whole fish, um, we've even found octopus in there before, um, and squid. Uh, so it's kind of a neat uh, experience to find out what's in the stomach. Um, you also will find crab, um, sometimes even lobster as well. Uh, now their teeth of a shark, of any shark really, uh, they have about anywhere from six to eight rows of teeth. So they're going to go through, through several thousand teeth uh, during their lifetime. Uh, the way that the shark's jaw is, ma is made is that these rows basically act as conveyor belts um, because of how violent and uh, feeding can be. Once a shark bites into a prey item, that sometimes those teeth can easily come out. Um, and then once that tooth is, uh, is out, it will be replaced by the one that's next in line. Um, so without its teeth, the shark obviously can't eat. Um, so that's why, for example, if you go to the beach, you'll find hundreds, thousands of fossilized shark's teeth uh, laying out there uh, because throughout their lifetime, they just go through thousands of these teeth. Um, and so they are all over the place, um, as well as the fact that they're made out of a uh, harder material than the cartilage, so they actually fossilize very well, um, uh, allows them to be able to commonly be found. Um, if you guys are interested in uh, dissecting uh, any sort of animals, whether that be sharks, uh, squid, um, or, any, uh, or even a cow eye, for example, uh, we do all sorts of programs like this at Imagination Station all the time, um, and I hope to see you guys at the museum.